right now we're doing a test cut on a little piece of cardboard that will hold quarters and I'd like to do this practice cut before I use nicer cardboard because I want to make sure I have the size of everything and make sure everything is cutting right how I want it to be and I know what size of cardboard that I need. So right now it's going around and cutting out all the little circles and now it's going around and cutting out the cardboard itself. Now with this laser, you'll have to do a couple passes because it doesn't have an adjustable bed, it won't go in focus. But it's not too big of a deal and it looks like this cut is just about done so we'll check it out when it's done. So this software here is called K40 Whisper. It's a great project that's compatible with Linux. And I can actually take something from Inkscape, which is a vector graphics software. I drew this up in Inkscape, that sheet, and gave it a red stroke. And it knows what red is, so I'll save it and then oops, put it down and then open it in the K40 Whisperer program and I can just cut it straight from Inkscape, put it into here, and then it'll cut it out on here. And it's just that simple. So I really like that program, it's a big help. So on the first pass, I normally do a faster pass just to make sure everything is gonna be in line. And if anything messes up, it won't be a super deep cut. Now we're gonna move on to a slower cut. And I think I'm going to set it here to a speed I'll do 14, so that's pretty slow. And then here's my knob, and I'm going to have it at 100% regulation, the current. So the laser is gonna be at the max power it can. So I'm gonna head and click cut. It's gonna go through, send over all the data, and then it'll start cutting. And now here's the slower pass. It definitely looks like it's going all the way through. And now you can see the cardboard dropping out. So we'll let it go through the cut and see how well it works. So we have this coming right from the fan, going out our window, but this fan definitely is helping, but we can definitely still smell it in the room. So it's nice to have a little bit more ventilation than just that fan. So we have everything connected to this cart, everything it needs. So down here is the bucket of water for water cooling the laser tube. So we have the pump in the bucket, and then these tubes, I have attached to the cart and then they run up behind the laser cutter and feed the tube. So everything you need for the laser cutter is enclosed in this. So theoretically you could take this and move it to the other side of the room, plug it in and it'll cut just like this. And you can just see these cardboard pieces dropping right out. So we have experimented with air assist and that's what that little tube there is. But Right now we don't have the air compressor in here because this is kind of a more room that we stay in a little bit more, so we don't want the loud noise. But it's a lot better with the air assist, but it's not necessary. So right now we don't have it hooked up. So it looks like to me, right over here, looks like it's not quite as focused as it is over here. Over here they're dropping out, but over here it looks like they're not quite dropping down. So we need to adjust the focus a little bit, but it's not a big deal. So the number one rule with laser cutting is that you always stay by the laser cutter and watch the cut. It could catch on fire because it is using a very hot laser to burn through the cardboard. So then if it did catch on fire, you got your two switches here. You can turn off the laser switch and turn down the knob or you can just turn off the whole machine and then address the fire because you don't want it to burn up all the cardboard, melt the plastic, burn the belts, and even catch the whole machine on fire. Now our part is done cutting and we have the laser switch off and this is down to zero. So we can go ahead and open it up and take it out and everything's just falling right out. Go ahead and test it with our quarters. So it did really well, but right here in the corner, I just need to take a knife and finish it up. And there we go. 
So now let's go ahead and test fit this quarter. And that fits just perfect. It's press fit in there. And what I think I'm going to do is make another sheet of cardboard just like this, except the holes will be a little bit smaller. So you can't push the cardboard, or actually the coin, all the way through. So now I'm putting the quarters in. I have 64, 63, 62, 61. And we're gonna see how far back we can go. All right, and besides watching your cut, the most important thing you can do is clean the lens. Get a little tight on there, just off. Our lens. Try not to do that if you can. You do not want to scratch it. And we will clean the lens. Make sure there's no dust on it. So right here, it's pretty hard to read now, but it says lens flat side down. So this lens has a curved side and a flat side and we want to put the flat side down. Put the lens back in there. We're gonna move it flat side down. And screw it back on. And there we go, we're ready for the next cut. So we use this laser all the time for everything. It's way better than X-Acto knife and it can do perfect shapes like the circle. And we got this for 400 bucks online. You really can't beat that price. So as you can see, this down here is the clamp that it came with. Now I have absolutely no idea why they put that on there whenever your print bed is this big and they have your clamp that big. That is just useless, so I took that off and I just keep that down there. And I also, if I turn it on, put in an LED strip here, which really just illuminates everything and makes it a lot better so you can really see what's happening in your cut. And if I lift up under the electronics panel, we have this fan here, which helps blow air circulation in, so it's blowing in and out. And that helps keep some of the fumes down. But it's really easy to do modifications to this. I've repainted a couple things. I cut this back, actually because it was sticking out too far and it was actually making my print bed shorter. So I've done a few modifications and it's pretty fun. So hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.